Uh, hello. Well, we're going to go through some homework problems um, that um, you might have in pre-calculus class um, dealing with polynomials. And one of the key ones that you will probably see a lot of is one, and this is number 88 for my students. So if you're just viewing this from outside, um, you have no idea what this is. But what we're given is an open box. This is seen a lot in calculus and optimization problems and also and maybe in advanced algebra, algebra 2. And what you have is, is an open box. And you have an open box like this, um, the old open box problem. And in this problem it says, you have an open box with the locking tabs um, is to be made from a square piece of material that is four, 24 inches on a side. So each one of these is 24 inches. So it is a square, all right, 24 inches on each side. Um, this is to be done by cutting each square from the corners and folding them um, as dashed lines are shown in the figure. So what you have is a box, and you're going to be folding these sides up. All right, so on one side you have this side, which is up in the box. I'm kind of imagine this. Go all right, right here. This side is up, and then you have this other side, which would also be up. All right, but with this one right here. Okay, oops. Draw a bad 3D figure right here. All right, then you have another flap like that. All right, and then you have this other flap that's folded up. All right, and then you have this one thing up here and right there. And you have another flap that's folded up like this. And so you have this box, okay, with these two flaps. And that's these two sides right here and the one flap right there. All right, now from here, what we're going to do is it says verify that the volume of the box is given by an equation. Now we don't have that equation, but we want to find the volume of this box. All right, so let's find the equation of this box. So in order to figure this out, whenever I'm dealing with a problem, we're trying to find the volume. What I always start with is the basic equation of volume. Now for a box, hopefully everything is length times width times height. Now length times width times height, uh, we have to put this in the context of the problem. So looking at this, we're going to have our, we'll call this the L, we'll call this W. All right, and our height, if you think about the box, is going to be this right here, which is going to be the flap length. So we'll call that right there, which is W. Okay, now W, in the problem, it says that all these flaps, all right, are going to be X. So here is X, this is X, all these, all these different X's, all right, because that is the unknown length. That is what we're, all right, can maybe find or what changes. So put this in terms of X, all right, with the given information. So let's check this out. In order for the volume, the easy one is the height of the box is going to equal X. So we'll just say the height is equal to X. So put that out. All right, so the height equals x right there. Now, what is the width going to be? Well, the width is this length. And if you see the width, um, we see that the whole length of this board is 24. And we're cutting out this section right here and this section right there from there. Well, what is that section? Well, it's 24 appears minus the two x's, because we're cutting this one, which is 1x, and another x, so we're subtracting those two x values. So that's our width. Our length is going to be, when well, we look at our length, and our length is right here, okay? And our length is, well, if you notice, we are cutting out not just one, but two x values, two x values because this is a double flap. It's a double flap. So what we have right here is going to be um, 24 minus well, one set of two x's, and then another set of two x's, which actually give us 24 minus 4x. And that's going to give us our length. All right, now from here, we're going to take our values and use a little substitution, put this in terms of x. So I have my volume. The volume of this box is going to equal um, length, which we found out to be 24 minus 4x, All right, times our width, which is going to be 24 minus 2x, and then we have our height, which is x. Now, with the book, what they have next is they have a coefficient. So I'm going to actually simplify this. We can factor out a 4 out of this expression. All right, this term right here, I'll highlight that. This term I can factor out a 4. And so now if I factor out a 4, I'll have 6 minus x. Um, in this new expression, I can, this one right here, I can factor out a 2. So I'll do that. I'm going to factor out a 2. I'll have 12 minus x, and I'll have x right there. 
combine my terms, and I'll move this x to the front, so we have 2 times 4, which is 8. I'll put my x right here, and then we'll have 6 minus x, and then we'll also have 12 minus x, like so. And this is what usually a book will have for their answer, which is great. Okay? Now, by looking at this, okay, we can now go through and finish the rest of the problem. Because generally what they ask us in the next problem, in this one, is that they ask, what is the domain of this function? Now, the domain of this function for all polynomials is generally all real numbers. However, this is an application problem. And we're going to apply some things that you might have learned um, about polynomials. And that we're going to find this domain and put it in the context of the problem. By helping us do this, we're going to first graph this polynomial. So I'm going to graph the volume in terms of x, which is the height. All right, so I'm just going to put h equals the height, and we're thinking about this. So when we do this, I'm going to graph this polynomial that we have created, or that was given to us right here. And we're going to plot this, um, plot the zeros. So I'm going to plot the zeros. Got another one at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And another one at 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we got that one right there. From here, um, we're going to look at this polynomial and figure out what's going to happen. We can do a sign chart if we want to. Um, if I plug in a negative um, 1 in here, I get negative, a negative value. I get a positive value here, and I get a positive value there. So this value is actually going to be going negative. All right. And now using the, what I know about the zeros, I have a single multiplicity. So it's going to go up like this, and come back down, goes through here, then passes through there. Again, it is a third degree polynomial, so it looks like a cubic, like so. Now, and I can figure out the other ones doing a sign chart, but Knowing my graph analysis, we can draw it like this all. All right. From here, I can look at this and put in the context of the problem. If I, my domain, which is my x values, okay, domain is the x, I can think to myself, self, um, what is, what values can I plug in here? Well, in the context of the problem, x equals the height. So over here, can I plug in negative values? No, I don't want to use any of that value. Um, if I can plug in 0, I probably can't plug in 0, so x has to be greater than 0. Because if it was 0, it would well, mean to have no height, and also the volume would be 0. Over here at 6, I get another 0, so I don't want a volume like that. But I do have right here a volume that is positive. That makes sense. So I probably want a volume that's positive, so we'll go from 0 to 6. The next thing is I go over here, and well, notice that I have a negative volume, so I probably don't want to use that interval. And then over on this side, if I plugged in a value, which I do have a positive volume right here, which keeps on going up. But if I plug in a value that is larger than 12, like 13, and plug that into my original function, notice how I get 13 if I plug that in there. I have 12 minus 13, which gives me negative 1. Well, realize that this length right here, 12 minus 13, is actually our length of our, our box. Well, you can't have negative 1 for the length, so that makes no sense. And also, the volume cannot increase without bound. Bound means it can't keep on going up forever. So this interval, we're also not going to count. So our domain is from 0 to 6. Okay. For the last part of the problem, it says sketch the graph, which we already did, of a function and estimate the value of x for which the volume is the maximum. Now, looking at my sketch and trying to figure out what the maximum volume is, all right, and thinking that we have symmetry, I'm guessing our maximum volume is going to be right around when x is going to equal, um, well, we talk about symmetry. Probably around 3. Now, this doesn't necessarily going to be at 3 because it's not a parabola, but probably between 2 and 4. That's what I'm guessing that we're going to have this value. All right? Maybe a little bit less than 3, maybe a little greater than 3, but between 2 and 4. That's where I'm guessing we're going to have our max or min. To find out the actual location of the max or min, we're going to have to pay our calculator. So I'm going to pause this and get up my calculator, save a little time, so you can do the same. Welcome back. All right. I now have my calculator up here, and we're going to go through and solve this. Okay. I'm going to punch in my equation, so I have 8x. All right. We're going to have a value of 6 minus x there for our width, and our length is going to be 12 minus x. Now, once we have this in our calculator, we're going to have to go to our window, and this is what, knowing and seeing our sketch of a graph, we can help us figure out where we're going to go. We know our maximum is in our domain of from 0 to 6. So I'm going to punch that in there. 
and we'll have a y scale. Now, we're not going to have any negative values, so I'm going to start y min at 0. And how high is this volume going to be? Now, with the volume of a box, probably going to maybe be in the high hundreds. So I'm going to actually go to 300. I don't know if it's going to go that high, but we'll find out, and we'll do some trial and error. When I have this, I put in 10, and now I'm going to graph this. And I can see right here is that I didn't go high enough. All right. And it's coming back down right there. So let's go back to my window. And because I'm, I'm just going to go to some really outlandish 1500. I'm going to go by 100s. See if that works. So that's way too high. Actually, not too bad. Looks like it's working out. So we figure out our value. So I guess that our max value is going to be between 2 and 4 right there. So getting back here, we're going to go a second calculate. And we're going to find our actual maximum value. Just enter and go to the left side of our max, somewhere over here. There we go. Press enter. And then we're going to go to the right side. We're going to calculate, press enter. Press enter again. And 2.5. Okay. Well, that's definitely between 2 and 4. It's on the low end. So it's going to be 2.5. All right. And let's just put on the three decimal places 2.5, 36, 36. And that would be, um, if we put it in context, the height would be 2.356 and inches, I believe. Um, yes. All right. And so that is what our height of our box or the x values that we would need to cut out to find the maximum volume. All right. So that is a problem that you would see a lot in calculus of how to find, or in pre-calculus, of how to find maximums in application of polynomials. Hope this helps out. And uh, good luck and God bless the rest of the problems.